From the alley oops at Kizar to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time, and it is really bold, super bold, because we've got five bold predictions for the 49ers in this draft. Some of them are going to be very bold, and some of them I think people are going to use today. Eh, that's bold. But if it's really bold, it's going to be fun. You get all the impressions, all the clicks, <laughs> all of the likes, <laughs> maybe, hopefully. So yeah, if, you, if you're excited for this, you're pumped for this, hit that like button right now let us know right now in the comment section right. while you're going some bold predictions of your own hit the pause button real quick type them out let us know what you think they're going to be or what you think they should be but let's get going with this man five bold predictions bold prediction number one and what do we got the first bold prediction is that the 49ers are going to trade back up into the first round we've been talking about this for a while we have players that we think the 49ers could target at the end of the first round and i think the 49ers could trade up and that's my bold prediction that they trade up into the first round and pick up a player that is slid this is entirely possible right this isn't crazy right. crazy town bonkers like this is bold it's bold in the sense of who they would trade up to get and how high they would come right i think both of us feel there's a possibility they come into that mid 20 sort of range even a little bit higher than that in order to grab a guy like zayvon collins or even an edge rusher Horse is fine with coming all the way up to get Jalen Phillips if need be. Yeah. Um, so for the most part, this is this is something that I, I think the the only thing that would make this even more bold is if they did something crazy like coming all the way up into like 19, the 19 range into the early 20s. And that's funny enough. That's kind of my next bold prediction that the Niners are going to trade up into that, but they're not going to trade up into it in the traditional way and in the traditional sense. They're not going to give up really any capital. No, you see, the 49ers have already set the price tag for Jimmy G. They want a first round pick, ladies and germs. That's what they want. They want that round one pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. That's the only way they're moving off of him. And the Patriots are starting to get a little desperate at the quarterback spot because it's not looking like they can even maybe even get a Mac Jones now with where they're sitting. But they're not going to be willing to move off that one. They're not going to be willing to give that one up because they would now be paying more for a guy they traded away. They don't want to do it. It's just a little too steep of a price to pay. And with that and because of it, a desperate team like the Washington name redacteds who need a quarterback could sneak in and say, you know what? We'll pay that price. It's to get keeps Jimmy away from New England. We can get this guy in here, stabilizes our quarterback position. We think we got a team that can win. We got a solid defense. We've already seen what this guy can do with a solid defense in place. We feel we have that here. Ron Rivera goes, I can get it done with this guy. I got it done with Cam Newton. Maybe I can get it done with this guy. And they make the move and deal. Pick 19 to the San Francisco 49ers for Jimmy Garoppolo on draft day. It's plausible that Jimmy gets moved on draft day for sure. I, I think that, that that bold prediction could be correct because the fact is that people are going to get desperate when they can't move up and get one of these quarterbacks. The way that the 49ers traded up to three, it made it almost impossible for one of these players to slide that far in the draft. So true. now you have to make a huge power move, a Kansas City-like jump where they moved up to 10 to get Patrick Mahomes. That's probably the limit you can get one of these guys. I mean, somebody slides. They're not sliding past 10. I think somebody comes up and makes a move and gets their guy. So it's completely plausible. And if the if they were able to finesse, pick 19 out of them, they would... I mean, let's talk about the guy that they could possibly get. They could get a J.C. Horn or a Patrick Sertan or a Jalen Phillips. Any of those guys right there, that's a hotbed for them. 49er fans would go crazy for it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, yes, there are big questions about a rookie quarterback starting in year one in Kyle Shanahan's system. That's for sure. But adding two first-round talents, you can't pass up on the the idea or the possibility of trading Jimmy for a one. And I think that if that offer came through, the 49ers not only jump at it, but go flying through the door to get that deal done and make sure that they get the guy that they want. So, yes, Jimmy being traded 
100%. And I like your thought process that it could be the Washington football team. Because a lot of people think it's the Patriots. Like, they think yeah. it's, it's going to be a team that's going to be that team. And I'm, I'm saying, listen, I, that's not bold, right? That's not bold enough. Yeah. Everyone thinks that if he's going to get dealt, that's where he's going. Bold would be they're not willing to pull the trigger and another team is willing and kn- knows what it's gonna what it's gonna take now to get it done. They're not willing to move what the Patriots are, are, are offering. We gotta just sweeten the deal a little bit more, give them that one kicker, get our quarterback, or at least a guy that we know can win with a good defense. Bold? Are we saying it's possible? It's possible. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. Right. It's a fun I, conversation I, though. Yeah, I think with all of them, there's like a little bit of wiggle room. You of know, course. these are these are just bold predictions. Doesn't mean they're all gonna hap- you know, happen, but I have another bold prediction, and that is number three. Number three on our list is that the 49ers are gonna trade for a veteran player during the draft. Ooh. Maybe it's not as bold as people think because the 49ers have been making these kind of trades, especially the Trent Williams acquisition last year. But I think they double down, and I think that they use some future draft capital to go out and get a Stephon Gilmore from New England. Oh. New England decides to move on. They they like getting rid of a player a, a year early instead of a year late. His contract is coming up at the end of the year. Cap number's a little over $7 million. The 49ers go, you know what? We weren't able to get the top cornerback we wanted to get in the draft. You know, someone that we were really targeting. Maybe they missed out on Asante Samuel. And the Patriots say, you know what? Let's do it for a future pick. And the Niners do it. And I think that they will set themselves up. They will sign him to an extension, three to four years, and they will be established. Emmanuel Mosley will become a solid backup, and that's how the 49ers will address it. Verrett Gilmore for this year, moving forward, looking to sign Verrett to stabilize that corner position for years to come. That right there, my friend, isn't just bold. That makes me feel good. I like that one. (laughs) Front office, listen to that man right now and just get that taken care of. That is entirely doable. My question to you would be, what is the future pick, do you think? I think it's a third-round pick. Okay. I, I, I That's what I really think. I think a, a 2022 third-round pick, which is going to make people cringe because we've already given away our first-round picks. True. But everyone's got to remember that a value in next year's draft is not the same. So a third-round pick next year is not worth a third-round pick. The way that it works is it's kind of like a – it's not here yet, so it's not worth the same amount. You don't know where the 49ers are going to pick in round three next well, year. Well, it went a Super Bowl, then it's basically a round four pick. Plus, we also have a compensatory pick sure. for Martin Mayhew. And if players leave in free agency, which they always ultimately do, or maybe even Kendrick Bourne, we get a compensatory pick for that. Also true as well. So we could restock that way, give up the third, get Stephon Gilmore, and just set ourselves up because he can do everything that we need inside this defense. Absolutely. He's not pigeonholed into just a traditional standard cover three guy, which is what, you know, was happening on the other side of Richard Sherman. Signing Verrett kind of got us away from that. Adding this guy here, Stephon Gilmore. That really moves us away from being just a cover three wide nine scheme team to a team that can run that wide nine scheme and a variety of different coverages and packages and just schemes, man. It's, that's exciting to think about. Yeah, it's, it's scary to think about because if you get that kind of lockdown on the outside with the return of Bosa, Ebucom, those guys pass rushing, it's going to be hard for teams. But this is a move the 49ers need to make to make sure that they secure that secondary. That is the one place I think a lot of fans, especially us, are like most concerned about. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Number four on our list now is one that isn't going to be an unfamiliar scenario to one Mr. Shanahan. Shanahan's dealt with this in Washington when they were still the Redskins before the name redactants became a thing. Taking two quarterbacks in one draft. Yes, that's right. You heard me. Bold prediction for the 49ers in 2021 draft, they go with a second quarterback. Now, you may be going, who is it going to be? Where are they going to take it? Depends on the guy, right? If they're looking at Davis Mills and they love the guy, it's going to be probably a round two guy. Kyle Trask, you might be able to get him two, maybe round three. He's fallen down some boards, the quarterback from Florida. Kellen Mond, I hope to God not, but he's going to be somewhere in round two. Or they could be looking at just a young guy to bring in to try and develop. Take a, take a flyer on a guy like Shane Bouchelle or Sam Ellinger out of Texas. Right. Um, late in the draft, probably round six, round seven. Uh, it's not out of the Shanahan wheelhouse. It's happened no. before on a Shanahan team. It wouldn't be the first time. Probably won't be the last time that they take two quarterbacks in one draft, I would imagine. Um, it entirely is a possibility. Is it the like most probable thing in the world? No. Would it be very bold? Yes, because you're assuming that with them taking... Taking Justin Fields or Zach Wilson or 
you know, if something crazy happens and it's Trevor Lawrence or something even crazier happens and it's Trey Lance or Mac Jones there at three, you know, there's no need to address quarterback, right? You got Jimmy, you got this guy. But who knows? Maybe Shanahan's looking and scouting at these guys. And like I said, there's no leaks. We've been talking about this. The yeah. Niners don't leak. So you don't know how he's evaluating these quarterbacks. Maybe there's someone who's projected and is somewhere around round six or seven that Shanahan really feels in like four or five years could be a star and is willing to take a flyer on late in the draft and see what happens. I mean, part of the reason that this makes sense is because they said they're going to address that quarterback room. They're going to they're going to turn over every rock to make sure every stone to make sure they get the guys that they need. You're right. RG3 and Kirk Cousins in the same draft when they were with the football team. And really, that was kind of forced on them because they didn't want RG3. So they took Cousins in the fourth round to kind of stabilize it. In this case, it makes sense because let's say you do draft Justin Fields at pick three. The offense could change. So you need somebody that can run it. And it, you know, in the way that, you know, he, he's going to have some design runs and stuff like that. It's just, you have to take it full advantage of his ability and his skill set, or even Trey Lance for that, for that matter. And so now you need somebody that can do that. You're not going to go in there with Josh Rosen, you know, and these guys that they have right now as the backups, because they can't do it the same way. You don't want to have to change your offense. Sudfeld comes in. You you don't want these guys changing the offense. You want to be able to do the things that you do. I mean, that's what we always talk about when you lose Debo Samuel and them in the offense. The offense changes. Yep. So, a Sam Ellinger in six, round six, um, he's a guy that runs with the ball. He's big and physical. He has a strong arm. Somebody that's a developmental guy. That That's why he's not going higher. But Shanahan would be familiar with him. He's from Texas. You know, from the... from. Uh, yeah, from Texas. <laughs> and, you know, that would really be a guy that you could target as he would he kind of fit with those guys that he's already got. So it does make sense that that could be a move that they make because 100% they need to improve that room. It was not good. It's it's still not there. That's why they're making all these moves to try to find somebody that fits. Right now they have a lot of quarterbacks, but as they've shown with the safety position, they will keep signing guys until they get everyone they want until they can have guys that can compete and find the best guys. And we also know that they enjoy having three quarterbacks on the roster. Yeah. This isn't it was not the first year that they would potentially be keeping three quarterbacks on the roster. So if you're going into this draft with the idea of being, you're finding the replacement for Jimmy in a few years, why wouldn't you also in the same draft, if you find a quarterback that you like, why wouldn't you take a second one? And now you have your quarterback room, at least two of the three pieces for your quarterback room for the next five, six years. So then they're developing behind Jimmy. Especially if they're moving Jimmy on draft day. It's true. If they move him, that might signal and trigger the, the late round draft pick of a another, another quarterback. quarterback. Absolutely. You know, fill out the room. You know, you can have Rosen or Josh Johnson or Sudfeld be the, you know, the veteran guy in the room. The other guys are, you know, the young guys learning. And then you just roll with it. I, I think it's it, it's not like he hasn't done it before. You know, I mean, he had the veteran quarterback, and then he had let's, let's just Mullins and Beathard. I was gonna say, let's just hope it's not. Uh, let's stuff it's not Rosen. That's the veteran presence in the locker room. Um, that's for another day. Yeah, that's for another, <laughs> another day, another yeah. episode. We only got one left. We man. do, and this one we kind of shared the idea. It's a good. One. Is that the 49ers don't go interior offensive line, but they also don't go interior defensive line either. So they don't address the offensive line interior or defensive interior, which would be completely new for them because they have been addressing O-line and D-line in almost every single draft. Yeah, um, this is one that 49ers fans right now, I know all of you in the chat are losing it. No, yeah. why would they do this? They have to go O-line, they need to shore it up. But what if they're working with information we're just not? Mm. What if they know Rich Burke's coming back? What if Rich Burke is going to move over and play guard with Alex Mack at center? Run skill as your swing guy at the guard, tackle, center, and really your utility can do it all. Yet skill jumping around all over the place over there. And they're just comfortable with the pieces they have. Mm-hmm. They're sitting there going, we're going to be fine. We don't have to address it right now this year. We'll worry about it next year. We're going to have Mac for a few years. We got some time. We don't have to rush. We're not 100% in love with anyone here. We feel we'd have to give up draft capital maybe in order to come up to get a guy that we really want. And to be honest, after that move for pick three, we just don't want to give up any more capital right now. We're just going to sit pat. If someone falls to us, great. But you know what? They probably won't. And we're just, we're not going to touch it. I I don't think you're off base. You know, I think that that's accurate because Ben Garland, you could also bring Ben Garland back at a cheap contract and he could slide in there. So you have him. You just used draft capital on Colton McKivitz, a fifth round pick that you got in a trade. 
and you know that he's developing and he's somebody that they like at the guard position so but he's got ta some tackle right tackle ability so you've got a guy that can do it all justin skewell played guard last year so he's shown that he's flexible like you said daniel brunskill you know is also and i think they're high on brunskill i don't think they're yeah. low on him I, I don't think they make the moves right. that they make bring in alex mack if they weren't fine with going into this season with the idea of Brunskill being the starting right guard. Yeah. And I know that may make some 49ers fans cringe, but you've seen what he could be. We've seen that max potential when he faces guys like Aaron Donald right. and how well he looks. He's just not consistent. And maybe they feel they can get that consistency out of him with the full training camp and full preseason work. Well, I'd like to see just a full season of him playing guard. That you know, too. With him having to move to center and stuff, he just wasn't able to get you know the chemistry with the other guys. Plus, Mac being able to call the you know line calls and make all mm -hmm. the blocking adjustments on the line is going to help tremendously. Well, also being able to learn from him. Right. Too. Right. Because I mean, how, how much work and run did he really get with Weston Richburg, Brunskill? Yeah. Richburg was out most of the time. Well, Brunskill was playing a lot of tackle. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was pretty much doing whatever the Niners needed at the tackle position because McGlinchey and Staley were out in 2019 for, you know, a bunch of games. So I, I, I think there's like wiggle room there. I, I think, and, you know, a lot of people, if it, why would the, why Brunskill's that good? Why do you only get this amount of money? Why do you only get $675,000? I'll tell you what, he's exclusive rights free agent. Yep. He couldn't go anywhere else. He couldn't get anything else. He had no leverage. Nope. The 49ers knew he had no leverage, and they made sure they secured a starting caliber offensive lineman for six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Nice. It is nice. It's now they'll have nice. to address it next year, <laughs> especially if he will. plays sixteen games. Well, I if he plays sixteen games at Aaron Donald levels of controlling and dominance, then yeah, that man's getting paid a big fat chunk of money, and he's probably not in San Francisco. And that, that's one thing to remember: he doesn't get hurt. He shows up every single game, and he plays. It's true. And that is hard to come by. It's like a lot of people talk, you know, bad about Lakin Tomlinson. But you know what Lakin Tomlinson does every game? Available. Straps it up in place. Yeah, he's there. Yeah. He's there and he's performing. Exactly. The best of his abilities. Let us know what you think down below about these five bold predictions. Did you like him? Did you hate him? Did you hate him as much as our Trevor Lawrence video a few days ago? <laughs> Hopefully you didn't. Hopefully you think there's some, some nuggets of truth here or something that could happen. One of these is, has the potential of happening, but we don't know. Yeah. Don't know with certainty. No one knows what the 49ers front office is doing. They are so, so secretive. But it's fun to talk about. It's fun to speculate about, especially with the draft so close. Yeah, it's fun conversations to have. And it's talking about the draft. There's just so many moving parts that one thing can trigger something else happening. But these, you know, thinking about things the 49ers could possibly do is part of the fun. It's part of the conversation. Never means it's actual facts. We're not trying to tell you their facts. We're just saying these are some bold things that could happen. Absolutely. They could. Don't know. Have to wait and find out. Make sure you like the video if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. Subscriber count's going up. We're getting ever so close to the draft, just a few weeks away. It's right around the corner. You want to be here on draft day. Live reactions, first round, every pick from the 49ers pick at three to Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 32. You want to be here. It's going to be a fun time. You don't want to miss it. Yeah, you don't want to miss the reaction when the 49ers trade back up into the first round. And, and take Zayvon yeah. Collins out of Tulsa. Yeah, that'll be a reaction. If that happens, Alex will 100% lose his mind. I will. That will happen. You don't want to miss that at all whatsoever. But until then, 49ers fans, you stay safe. Remember the right way is, is always, always the 49ers, 49ers way.